So um, I forgot, when does the next uh, session start? The new class will begin, I think it's like in the middle of October, like October 12th or something like that. So after the holidays, it will be nice. We put the foundation out for our sukkah. I will send oh. you a picture of my sukkah. My sukkah is always beautiful. Denise and the nephew. <laughs> There yes, she is. is. All Hi, right. Hi, Hi, Denise. How are Hi, you? Hi, Denise. Oh, good to see everybody. Yeah. So uh, I am hoping to ship a bunch of you off to intermediate <laughs> into the uh, the middle of the pool, not the deep end in the middle of the pool. It's, a, it's not bad. How and about the shallow end of the intermediate? The shallow end, well, I don't know. That depends on your teacher. It depends on, on what she expects you to do. But I uh, made a little vocabulary list because I'm having my patio uh, power washed, if you can hear that. Mm -mm. It used to be that the guy was always coming and doing on Friday, he was always doing the lawn. <laughs> no matter where I went, you could always hear it. Uh, anyway, I, I thought the holidays are coming up when there will be a special, special yes service. Hi, Diane. Hello. Hey, Hello. Yiska service. And I thought that you should have an idea about the Hebrew of the Lord is my shepherd, Psalm 23. So they don't usually do that when you um, are saying Yiska for someone. Like my mother's uh, yard site is coming up in October. So they don't do a full Yiska service. You know, uh, mentioning the relatives and the synagogue people and 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 mother and father and all the people. And so when you just say you're going for it, you want to have a minion because it's someone in the family's yard site, then uh, they do um, the mourners Kaddish. And we have in our synagogue a special prayer that if there isn't a minion, if there aren't 10 people, there's a very nice prayer in lieu of the Mourners Kaddish, which is in English, which is really very nice. Mm -hmm. If you just have, let's say, nine. And that 10th one is not forthcoming. So, hi, Diane. Hi, Diane. Hi, Diane. Hello. <laughs> Oops, so, I can well, only see the top of your head. Yeah, can you get up a little higher or put the computer down a little bit? Robinson's webpage. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Look through it. I think it's from his fifth oh. grade teacher. We see your head. He was in fifth grade. We see your oh, hair. Turn your thing off. Oh. Oh. Okay, so anyway, I wanted to go over that vocabulary because there are a lot of words there where I think you might have an idea what they mean. So that's, uh, it's like Shakespeare's sonnets. They are known by by their number or by the first line, by the first line. So the Lord is my shepherd is Psalm 23 because the first words are, and it, I sent you the Hebrew and the English, Adonai ro'i lo echsar. The Adonai is my shepherd, I shall not want. So that's why it's referred to as the Lord is my shepherd or Psalm 23. It's the same thing. Okay, because there's 150 Psalms by King David. Yes, Denise? Am I the only one who remembers when we were in primary and elementary school, they used to, we used to say this every day before wow. we were in classes. We read the Lord, uh, yeah, we did. I and remember did. once a week at assembly in elementary school where they did the Lord's Prayer. No, they, we did. Our Lord Father, our Father, what in heaven. Lord in heaven, right. Yeah. No, we said, we, I, I had this memorized. By the time I got out of elementary school, I had this thing memorized in English because we yeah. said it every day. Wow. Denise, so where, were you, where was this? Hamilton Township, New Jersey. Wow. And we trust right. me to tell you, unfortunately, they haven't gotten any more open minded. I mean, they follow the laws because they have to, but we're still very conservative. Yeah. So um, I don't remember doing this, but like I said, we did the Our Father once a week on a Wednesday where, you know, when we had assembly, we had to wear a white blouse and a red tie and a blue skirt. And everybody had to come that way, you know, and that's the way it was. So if you have the vocabulary list that I made up, with yep. my terrible print. So Roe is a shepherd. And so King David was a shepherd and it's not a big surprise that he would have this image because that's what he was, he was a shepherd. 
David. So row E and a row A is a female, a shepherdess. Now the ones that I put in brackets are the shorash, the root. And again, oh. if you can start to focus on the middle of the word and then you can start to guess at the root. So chaser is lacking, to lack. And the English says, and so I'm going to compare it. It says, God uh, is my, I don't know, is my shepherd. I shall not want. Well, I shall not want. Chaser is, I shall not lack. Nothing shall be, something is lacking to me. Okay? That's what chaser means. I'm missing something. I'm chaser. I'm lacking. And um, deshe is grass. So it says, um, Adonai is my shepherd, I shall not want. It means I'm not lacking anything. God gives me repose. I'm going to lie down in green meadows. And the green meadows is desha, is grass. The oat yes. is pastures. So it looks like a very nice, calm thing here. God gives me repose. I'm going to lie down in green meadows or pastures. Now, um, Minucha is rest. Should I double it up? Um, let's see. I'll make Minuchot. Okay, by the waters I will rest. So Minucha is rest. And guides Nahal. So he guides me besides, okay. He guides me over calm waters. We're resting in meadows and guides me over calm waters. And so Nahal is guides me. Um, and Gay is a garden, Salmavid. Salmavid is death. Death. So the Gay Salmavid is the is a valley of death. <laughs> Okay, so this is a whole symbolism here, which is very green and lush, and um, I don't lack anything, and there's water, abundance of water, which symbolizes life in poetry. Water is always symbolizing life, and so there's the symbols of life and green grass, fertility. So there, there are no like ashes and dirt and dust and darkness. Everything is lush and green, so it's like a second life. It's not a scary image. That's the whole idea. Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. You have a shepherd because we're in the meadows. God gives me repose. I'm resting in green meadows. And guides me over calm waters. All of these are very calm images. God will revive my spirit. This would be a reference, I guess, to the nephesh that is supposed to live on your soul. And we say it lives on in memory that we have of all the people that we love. And it will revive my spirit and direct me on the right path that is God's way. So let's see. Um, Denise asked me last week about this phrase, lo ira ra. Ra is the opposite of tov, good and evil. Okay. So lo ira, I, I will not fear ra, lo ira ra, and then uh, because ki ata, you, God, im means with, and when you put with me in, you attach the preposition imadi. Lo ira ra ki ata imadi. And that's what Denise was asking me about. And so it says, uh, I fear no harm for you are at my side. You are imadi. And then um, Shevet is a rod. I guess um, the idea of a shepherd or shepherdess, they have a staff, right? The rod, that crook, crooked thing on the top. Uh, if you go to a garden shop, You'll find the thing like that is straight. It has got like a little crook and then you can put a basket on there, right? Some people have that kind of a thing in the yard. So you know what a shepherd's crook looks like. And then it says, your staff and your rod comfort me. 
No, I don't actually know what that means. Anybody have an idea? <laughs> How would this shepherd's staff and rod comfort somebody? That I I don't uh, understand. Is it a protection? Like it's maybe you have something to like the a staff to right. That, that could very well be because uh sheep would be vulnerable to wolves. Right. Right? Coyotes and, and mad dogs. <laughs> <laughs> you prepare a banquet for me in the presence of my foes. Okay, you prepare a banquet that's me a food and the presence of my enemies so uh i here i am resting it's like in the afterlife um protected everything is growing and fertile it's, everything is nice and i am uh protected from my enemies you anoint my head with oil so anointing someone we know that on uh, yom kippur the torah readings are about uh, anointing a new Kohen Gadol. And that's a very big thing in Judaism. An anointing with oil. And that's when when um, the Kohen's sons take over from him. They have to get the special vestments. They have to get the oil. And then I guess they have to take a shower because the hair is kind of greasy. <laughs> mm. So you anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows wine. We know from Passover is always a symbol of happiness and joy, celebration, the iron. And my cup overflows. Uh, when my son-in-law, who's a Chabad, when he drinks wine, he takes it in his hand and he fills the cup to overflowing. So it, it comes over the top. Right? So you anoint my head. because my, cu my cup is overflowing with wine. That means not only do I have enough, but I have more than enough. My happiness is unbounded. Then surely goodness and kindness shall be my portion all the days of my life, which is a little problematic because you're dead. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this is <laughs> goodness and kindness shall be my portion all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of Adonai in the fullness of time forever. And so we had uh, the word, um, like the name Nahama means comfort. So uh, Naham is comforting somebody, Nahama. Shevet is rod. Okay, uh, prepare a roch. I told you that there was um, commentary on some of the laws, the, the Shulchan Aruch. The Kitsur Shulchan Aruch is all the laws. And I have a... a, a of a set of volumes. It's about five books. It's supposed to be short, but it's like five books. But they're skinny. And then there was commentary on Joseph Cairo's, Joseph Caro's laws, his interpretation. And I told you that was called, so his is called a shulchan. A shulchan is where the Torah is placed. You know that word, the shulchan? They use that. That's the synagogue vocabulary. The shulchan is the table where they have a nice cover and they put the Torah. So the Shohan Aruch means the prepared table. And that was the uh, summarizing of all the laws. And then somebody, Surleys, did a, a commentary on, on the previous commentator, Joseph Caro, and it, he called it Hamapa, the tablecloth. So this is another layer of commentary. You have the prepared table and then the tablecloth. Only Jews could think of this. I'm telling you, this is like... <laughs> You have, you have to really be sick to me to have a body. That's why you have so many lawyers because you're thinking out of the box all the time. That's why there's so many uh, Jewish comedians and 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 Jewish pundits who can make puns. My husband and I would pun back and forth all the time, and he wants to know if I understand what he says. And I always check up. Did you really understand what I said? But there's always layers of meaning. Layers. It's never simple. It's always complicated. When when you read the uh, homage that you use for services, there's always commentary on the bottom. And below the commentary, there's more commentary, right? There's a line. There's like the numbers for number three. And there's a commentary. And, this, and then below, it's another explanation from somebody else. We never finish explaining. This is keep on forever. And and if the rabbi opens up a drash, you know, his, his Shabbat talk, 
to the congregants, will we be there for all? If, if you took everybody's question, I mean, I'm guilty. Guilty on my hand is always up to make a comment. I always have to say something. Because I think of this stuff. When he gives a good rush and a good talk, I'm always thinking about, oh, yeah, it, it refers to this. And, and, and maybe it really means this. We would be there for hours if he took everybody's comments. So that's that's just the way Jewish scholarship is. That's why people have huge libraries, right? That's why Jews are called the people of the book. They are, because we just can't get our face out of it, you know. Okay, yes. so Aroch, the Aroch is to prepare. And then Shemen is oil. Shemen Zaid is olive oil. And there is a place in Israel where they still make pure olive oil because there's a crazy group in Jerusalem who is preparing for the third temple. Hopefully they never get there because that would be a holy war between all between Arabs and Jews. That would not be pretty. We don't want to go there. But they are preparing to have uh, special animals that have no blemishes for sacrifice. And I'm not in with that. There's something also, did you ever hear of something called the Jerusalem syndrome? Those are people who go around, they think they're Christ. Okay. In Jerusalem, so they're so religious that they they identify and they, they feel that they are the Mashiach. And that's really a little Mashuga. <laughs> I mean, it's crazy, you know. But there, there are people who, yeah, they're getting ready for the third temple. Okay, and a kos, we drink uh, arba kosot, four cups of wine on Pesach, okay? And then this phrase, kol yemei chayai, all the days of my life. All the days of my life. So that I think is in the Torah too, all the days of my life and in the Haggadah, not, not the nights, the days and the nights. Remember they had that whole discussion about that's the days and the nights. Okay, so that was just to give you a little bit of, now, do any of you have any prayer book in front of you? Because in the Mahsur, when they do that service and they send the kids out because they don't want the kids to get bad dreams about, you know, talking about people who died and all. So they usually say that if you haven't lost anybody you can go outside and, and the children go outside so that the children you know it's a serious subject but um the um uh, this psalm that i sent you is on 293 and then the very next page is kadish yatom and that's the kaddish now you may hear some people saying yiskadal yes i heard that Yitmarach. Wait, wait, no, where are we? Yeah, Yiskadal, the Yiskadash, May Rabbah. Okay, some of the older timers than us, because that is when they went to Cheder, when they were small in Brooklyn or the Bronx or wherever, they had teachers, rabbis, and Hebrew teachers who were still pronouncing things in the Ashkenazic way. So oh. the Tav, they pronounced like a S. Okay, so they say Yiskadal and Yiskadash, May Rabbah. Um, but in modern Sephardic pronunciation, we pronounce always the top is a, is a T sound, and that's it. It's no longer pronounced an S sound. When I used to gabby, uh, be gabby Rishon, there was a, a, a gentleman who was fairly uh, well into his years, and he was educated in Europe. And I had a hard time gabbying because I had to follow that pronunciation and that was a little difficult when you're going through a Torah portion anyway are what all page you, are you on Carol you said 293 294 in the brown book if you have it oh okay oh, what okay. about the the red book Please. um the red book if you I don't know I don't have that with me but you can look up uh the end of the Torah service the end oh, okay. of Musaf, the end of Shabbat Musaf, right before the oh, okay. end of the whole service around Adon Olam okay. is, is the Mornis Kaddish. It's before in Kelohenu, I think, and the Mornis Kaddish, and then we do um, Aleinu, and then they get to Adon Olam, and that's it. 
What about the 23rd Psalm? Okay, so we'll get to that, but I, I just want to make sure oh, that okay. you all read that you can all follow because there's going to be um, Yom Kippur is a time when we have a Yiska service and on Shemini Seret. And I, I, I wrote to you that on other holidays, Shavuot and Pesach and all the Shalosh Regalim, which are the three pilgrimage holidays when in ancient Israel, they used to go up to Israel because you can't have the barbecue in the backyard. You can't sacrifice to God on your backyard patio. You had to travel to Jerusalem and there they made the sacrifices. Okay. So, uh, uh, and by the way, um, La Alot, if you've been to Israel, Jerusalem is on a hill. It's high up. Whereas Tel Aviv is by the seashore, at sea level. So they call people who leave, who go from the United States, leave the United States and make Aliyah, the word La Alot, Aliyah means going up, going up spiritually. It's from the verb La Alot, Ole, somebody who goes up and, and settles in Israel is supposed to be going up spiritually. The opposite is also true. There is a negative word for people who leave Israel and come to the United States, and they are called Yardim, those who have gone down. And when you say it rains in, in Hebrew, you say Yored comes down, Geshem. So they call them the Yardim, those who are going down. So it's kind of like a little negative a little punch right you went you left israel so the kaddish if you you might know it by heart and if you can find it if you have the machsor it's on 294 if you have any other if you have the red prayer book uh you oh, can i found it's on well um you have the red one 32 i have the red book right it's many it's sprinkled in, yeah. in many places but 32 okay so it's called Kaddish Yatom. And I think we should say it slowly because this is one of the things that is, is part of your uh, Jewish heritage is being able to say Yiska to somebody. You know, on the, your, everybody knows what the, the Yiddish word yard site means. Yar in Yiddish means year. Site means time. It's the anniversary of somebody's death on their Hebrew the day they, uh, on the Hebrew calendar, it's the day that they died. So that's their yard site. Okay, that's a Yiddish word. Hmm. Okay. You'll find there's a lot of Yiddish in Hebrew. There's a lot of Yiddish. Okay, so let's say it slowly. The first uh, part starts with Yit Gadal. All right, can we all have that? Mm -hmm. All right, let's do it. Achat Shtayim Shalosh. Yit Gadal. V'yit Kadash. Shemay Rabba B. Alma D. Zara Hirute B. Yamli Al Hute Haye Home Uviome Home Uva Haye De Ho Bait Yisrael Ba Agala O Vizman Kari the Imru Amen. Do you know what uh the Imru means and say everybody say and you will say you know what Amen means? Amen means may it be so. May it be so. Whatever I said, that's that's the, the truth. Okay. So then uh we say Yehei, Shmei, Rabba, Nevarach, Laolam, Laolmei, Olmaya. And everybody says that congregation and the people who are, are have the yard site. And then the mourners continue Yid Barach, Yishtaba, Yid Paar, Yid Roman, Yid Nase. Viet Hanar, Viet Aleph, Viet Halal, Shemay, Shemay, Berich Hu. may his name be blessed. Berich Hu. La'ela, La'ela, 
มีคอบีร์คาทาเบชิราทาชูชเบคาทาเบเนคาทาเบเนคามาทาดาอามิรอนดิออมอนดิเอมรูอามีนยัยเฮสลามาราบามินสมายาเวคายิมอเลนุยาอัลคอยิสราเอลดิเอมรูอามีนโอเซย์ชัลลอนดิมรูมาอยาอาเซย์ชัลลอนอาเลนุยาอัลคอยิสราเอล Now there is one woman in our congregation who always likes to say that line brackets. So it says, "May there be peace, Aleinu Ama, upon us and all Israel." And then she likes to add, "Vial Kol Yoshevei Tevel," and all living creatures, all who live, all all who who live, uh, all, all living beings. And now, you're gonna see the root. Can you find the root kodesh in any words? Because this is about saying God is sanctified and holy. If you can pick it out, well, look at the very first line, yikadal. What does what does the root gadol mean? Great big. Okay. Okay. okay, so it says. Uh, God is big, great. The Yit Kadash and what does Kodesh mean? Oh, holy, big, great, and holy. Shemay. Now, don't forget what language are we speaking in in this prayer when the words end in Allah? Aramaic. 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 That was the spoken language in ancient Israel, and Hebrew is the holy language. So, yeah, v i t gadal v i t kadash may it it be great and holy. Shemay is like shame. Name your name, Raba, the great your 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 great name. Uh, let me see if there's some more. What about the third line, Vayam Lich? Carol, can I ask you again what page it is? In okay, I'm on two ninety four. Okay. So what does Melech mean, or Malchut? King. 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 Yamlich. So these are verbs. Will reign. God will reign. Malchute. Yamlich will reign. Malchut is a kingdom. May your kingdom reign. Okay. Bechayechon uvech of yomechom esrim. Okay, you know Beit Yisrael. See some of these words that you might know. How about Yeheshme Raba Mivarach? What does Baruch mean? Blessed. So may it be Shme your name, your great name, blessed. Okay, La Alam forever and ever. Um, so Yit Barach may be blessed. And so far, you can start picking out roots. Shemay de Kudashecha, Shemay de Kudasha, your holy name, Berich who may be blessed, and so forth. So you can see that there's a lot. And then the, we know the bottom. Ose Shalom, make peace, Bim Roma, around us. Who in God? Yaase will make Shalom, peace. Aleinu upon us, the Al Kol Yisrael and all Israel, the Al Kol Yosrei Tevel, the Emor Amen. Okay, so that that is something. Yes, Denise. When we say this um, in Shul, the last verse, the rabbi steps back from the what's it called, the Shulchan. So okay, on his podium. Steps back from that, and then he bl he bows from one side to the other. Yeah. Then what does that mean? Come to the end. It's just the way you end the prayer. It's it's like lachado di. You take three steps back, and you bow left. You bow right. When I asked my rabbi once, "What do you do first, right or left?" He says, "I don't know." He said, "I just oh, good. do it." I don't, 
don't think about it. It's, it's, it's second nature, right? You know, when you're doing that. Okay, so it's really as part of your Jewish um, vocabulary, you should be able to do this at the speed in which it's done. And this will be on um, Yom Kippur. They will have a special service. They'll have a Yiska service. They'll ask people to go outside who don't uh, who this doesn't pertain to, and the children. Right? That's a Yiska. All right. Let's now let's get into reading of. Uh, the Psalm of David. So this one I gave you, page 293. In so now you have an idea about what it means. So even though we're dying and you're you're saying the Psalm about somebody who's died, you're giving the person a very uh, nice, a positive view of maybe not concretely this person running through the fields barefoot and, you know, la, 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 and singing. Oh, I can't. Uh, but it's it's a feeling that our memory is really the green fields. It's what we think about our grandparents, our great grandparents, and any any congregants and and any family and friends. That's the to me. That's the greenness. That's the fertility. That's the everlastingness of somebody. That's why I think, in retrospect, Jewish people are so um, fanatic about shame to about a good reputation that that is something that is a key thing in doing this vote because you want your name when somebody says your name your name is very important you want your name to be with praise okay a good good memory you don't want your name to be like some of our politicians that people go oh my god you know you want people to think well of you when you're alive and even when you're dead and uh, and I told you one of the customs, and I'm hoping maybe this Sunday I'll get to go to the cemetery because you go to the cemetery and you beg forgiveness from those people who have died. You say if I if I did anything, you know, while I was while you were alive, I uh, and and it is a weird thing to be going to the cemetery to asking the person to forgive you. Let me see. I I have my fellow here. Norm, you want to see if. If uh, James is at the door, so that's we we get into the weeds a lot, Jewish people. We we have this uh, sensitivities to animals, as we read in the uh, Torah portions recently. You can't yoke two different kinds of animals with two different kinds of strength. You can't have um, I don't know why the dog is barking. You can't have an ox and a cow together. You can't have two. Different you can't. Have this is a calm dog, <laughs> usually. Uh, y y you're not supposed to take the eggs under the mother bird. You have to shoo the mother bird away so she doesn't feel bad. You're not supposed to uh, boil um, a baby kid in the mother's milk because it's the idea of a sensitivity to animals. Here is the mother's milk, and you're using that as a vehicle to, to boil, to, to kill. The children. So the sensitivities to animals are there. I mean, and, and that's one of the things I really love about Yiddishkeit and about about um, our religion is that we are very finely tuned in to the universe, to plants. And I am very upset when plants die. <laughs> I can't take that, even the plants, let alone you know, let alone animals. Okay. With that in mind, let's do. Ms. Moral and David, this is a Psalm of David. Okay. Norm, everything okay? Yeah. Okay. Thanks for the pressure while she's going to drop the machine off. All right. So let's do it. Each person take a line and let's take your time. And as I wrote to you, uh, be careful of the vowels. If you're going into the intermediate class, you might want to take a look at some of the early things that we went over or the early things in the um, Hebrew book that you got uh, in the beginner class. I forgot the name of the rabbi. Uh, Diane? Where, what, what are we on exactly? We're gonna do the 23rd Psalm. This one Page I you. 293. Lord is my shepherd, 293, okay? Yeah. All right, so with that in mind, who would like to start the first line? Everybody get a line. Okay, Diane, you're up. 
Adenoi Ro E Lo F. What was the first wait? What was the first word? Adenoi. Yeah. Ro E Lo Echasar. Echasar. Right. That's a shva. That's a silent shva. Adenoi Ro E Lo Echasar. Okay. Next one. Denise, you want to try it? I have. I'm getting to it. I'm in. I'm, <laughs> I don't. I have a different mock source, so I'm. I'm going into my. So oh, you didn't get the print. The printouts I sent. No. Yeah, and I'm not sure what I did with them. Okay. All right. Well, while she's finding that, Diane, Stacy, you want to try the second line? Yeah. Uh, bean oat, deshe, yarbi sarni. Yarbi sarni. So, uh, am I correct now that you're going to sign up for the adult bat mitzvah? Uh, yes, yes, I'm wow. proud, of you. I'm proud of you. Yeah, <laughs> Denise, you were her inspiration. Yes, I, I don't know if you saw my email, but Denise, I, yeah, yeah. It really, it's really wonderful. Make sure you tell them. But it's, uh, what did you say? They, they, are, they do a great job. You're going to really enjoy it. They're going to teach you. Know, fly by. You're going to teach you how to read uh, Torah, and mm -hmm. there, it's going to be wonderful. Okay. So Adonai Ro Elo Echsar, Bino Desha Yarbitseni. Nicely done. Okay. Um, I'll go next. Okay. Nancy. Al me mi nu hot. Yana haleni. Good. Al me mi nu hot. Yana haleni. Very nice. Okay. Benzine, want to take the fourth line? Sure. Nafshi Yeshovev Yancheni the Magale Lai Sedek Lamaan Shmo. Nice, very nice. Uh, Denise, did you find it? Yeah, I think so, yeah. Okay, one, two, three, four, five. Start with gum. Gum, ki, elecha. Elech. Elech. Bege. Za, um, zalema, zalemot. Zalemut. Take it syllable. Sal. Ma. Ma. Vet. Sal ma vet. Oh, Salmavet. Mm -hmm. Keep going. Um, lo, ira. This is your line. Yeah, I know. Lo, <laughs> ira, ra, ki, ata, um, imadi. Right. Very good. Okay. Uh, Denise, Jennifer, did you have a line? Francis doesn't have a line. Oh, no. Yeah. Yeah. And Diane Gensler started, right? Yeah, I did oh, the first okay. one. I can go again if you want. I do want you to go again. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Sif Tcha. Look at the first letter. Oh, Sif Tcha. Mm -hmm. Umish An Tcha. Good, big word. Hema Yenachamni. Yenachamuni. Very nice. Okay. Uh, Nancy? Ta, uh, Roch? Good. Le, le, fani, le, fana. Le, fanai. Le, fanai. That's the next yeah, word the, is the table. Yes. Um, shul, oh, shulhan. Good. Negad. Negad. Sar, sar, oh, it's that same. Sar, so, sar, yes, sor, sor, rech. So, re, rai. So, so, re, rai. Okay. Okay. Ta'aroch, lefanai, shulchan, neged, so, re, rai. So, you're preparing a table against my enemies, is that what I said? Because neged is. Against. All right. The third line from the bottom. Do we have some Francine? Yishanita 
Basha, Bashemen, mm -hmm. Roshi, Kosi, Re, Revaya. Excellent. Okay. And then second from the bottom, Diane Stacy, Ach, Ach, Tov, Yahes. Va, it's a vav. It's got it's a full letter. Va has said. Mm -hmm. Year defuni. She did that great. Now that's the example when you have the two shvas in a row. You have to break them up like two fighting twins. And the first one is a is a silent shva. Year. And the one that begins the next syllable is sounded year, and it sounds like the i in if. Year de funi. Really good. Nice job. O yame aya. Aya. Kayai. Kayai. Okay, but that. Yai. Kayai. Kayai. Ach tov, ach hesed, yir defuni, kol yemei chayai. All right, and the last one. Uh, Charlene, do you feel like reading? I thought you're trying to, yeah, I've got the um, High Holiday Prayer Book. Okay, uh, it, does it have a black cover? Yes. That's the Silverman. <laughs> this is this is the newer one, the, the brown one. We don't use that one. All right, you have the old one. Okay. Anyway, it would be under the Yiska. So, and that yeah, is... I'm in Yiska. Let's see. Okay, so the last line is Vishavti, and I will dwell. Bivet Adonai, in the house of God. Laorech Yamin. All my days. For the length of my days. Okay, so that's that's the, um, the psalm. And you don't have to do it in Hebrew because usually what they do is the cantor says a line in Hebrew and then you say it in English. However, I just thought that you might want to take a look at it because it's so prevalent and you're going to see it. It's going to come at you in all the Chagim, in all the um, the pilgrimage holidays, the three pilgrimage holidays, which are Sukkot, Pesach, and Shavuot. And, and during the high holidays, it's done on Yom Kippur and also on Shemini Atzeret. That's like the Shemini Atzeret is the eighth day and Simchat Torah is the ninth day tack on. Okay. All right. So now let's take a look. I sent you a story and I know you hate me <laughs> because it's... <laughs> okay. Um, the tear had Hadima. All right, you know what? There's a story I wanted to read to you. This is really nice. Can I read you a little story in English? All right, do you know this? This book is really this really nice book, Capturing the Moon. If you ever see it someplace, you should buy it. And then I want you to tell me. What was the book? Sorry. Capturing the Moon. Oh, okay. Um, by Rabbi Ed Feinstein. Mm -hmm. And I have it signed. Mm -hmm. Your story with love. Okay. There once was a king who had a magnificent collection of jewels. Among his jewels was his very favorite, a great, perfect diamond. After each long, hard day of governing the kingdom, settling conflicts, and making difficult decisions, he would retreat to his private chambers to meditate on the perfection of this diamond. The diamond brought the king great joy caressing its surfaces, gazing upon its facets. He concluded that the diamond was proof that something perfect could exist in this world. Everything else in life was compromised. One night, a tragedy occurred. While the king was caressing the diamond, it fell from his hands and careened through the air, smashing onto the stone floor. With trembling fingers, he picked it up and peered into its interior. To his horror, the king perceived a long spindle of a crack running from the very top to the very bottom of the gym. The king was distraught. The diamond was flawed, 
its perfection forever ruined. He grieved over the broken jewel, the last perfect thing in all creation. He was inconsolable. The ministers and servants of the king seeking to comfort him brought all sorts of experts to the royal court to repair the diamond. Jewelers, gemologists, scientists, technicians, and even wizards were engaged. All failed to repair, repair the crack. Finally, they came one wise old craftsman. He looked carefully into the diamond for a long time, then looked up into the face of the king. Give me a week and I will repair your diamond, he announced. You can repair it? So many others have tried and failed, the king responded sadly. Give it to me for a week and I will bring it back more perfect than before. More perfect? Echoed the astonished king. Yes, more perfect. The king, intrigued by the offer, handed the precious gem to the craftsman. Within the week, the craftsman had returned. Have you fixed it? Asked the king anxiously. I have, replied the craftsman. It is once again perfect. In fact, it is more perfect than before. He handed the diamond to the king. The king lifted it to the light, and there was the crack, just as it had been before, long, spindly, marring the perfection of the gem from its very top to its very bottom. Do you mock me? It is still broken. It is still flawed, roared the desperate king. Look again, said the craftsman, and he turned the diamond over. The king held again held it up to the light, and now he saw at the top where the crack met the tip of the diamond, the craftsman had carved a tiny rose. Now instead of a long, ugly crack marring the perfection of the gem, the diamond had within it the most exquisite flower with a long, magnificent stem running through the stone from its top to its bottom. Here, my lord, offered the craftsman, it is not only repaired, but in truth, it is now unique, more remarkable, more perfect than before. Now, I really like that. Yeah. Well, that story have to do with the high holidays and the whole concept of teshuva. What's mm -hmm. the, the essence of that story? It's a, it's a lovely story. I really like it. But what does this have to do with us? When we go and we, we beat our breasts and we say for the sin of this and the sin of that, and we have this whole long litany of prayers and we spend a whole day in shul saying we're sorry, going to our friends and relatives and, and, and speaking to God in our hearts, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. When we finish that whole process of teshuva, how are we supposed to come out of it? The same or different? No, better. Renewed. Different. Better. Renewed. Better. More beautiful than before. Our, our neshamas are clean. We feel good. We feel good about ourselves, right? And, and our place in the universe. So I think that that's what the story is all about. It's all about teshuva. It's all about if you're flawed, if you've done some bad things, this is a time to make yourself more beautiful more perfect than before. I just think it's a, a, a great story. And um, okay, moving right along. We had a, a, a lot of things to do today. The, the tear, okay, more Hebrew. Oh, you poor ladies, putting you through your paces. All right, so we have this. Now we have the story. Okay, story was page. 72. This book, by the way, Hebrew Through Values with all these lovely little stories, is out of print. I have a copy because I'm old <laughs> and I had it for a long time. And I used it in Hebrew school, I told you very successfully. And this, uh, the name of the story is called Shuva, Repentance. Carol, is this the same book you just read from? No, no. This, this is out of print. So What's what I did, oh. we read through values, our okay. values. What I did when I was teaching, since I only had this one copy, they made a whole packet. They made photocopies and I gave a packet of the stories to each student. I made them do that because I wanted, really wanted to use it. 
And it says teshuva, repentance to the Jew means the inward change of heart leading to turning away from evil. Repentance means self-improvement, getting better, a return to the good way of life. Okay. And here is a quote, Ein gadol mi ba'al teshuva. There's nothing greater, no one greater than ba'al is a master of repentance. It also means owner. And I told you the word for husband in modern Hebrew is, you want to say my husband, it's ba'ali. But you know that in, in Jewish history, the ba'alim were foreign gods. So no respecting Israeli woman wants to call her husband her master. Ba'al is a master. Ba'ali, my, my master. So now what they say is ben zugi. Zug is a pair. Ben Zugi is a son of, of the pair, the man of the pair, like a, a bar, like a, well, we say bar mitzvah, but, but bar and ben are both the meaning son. So they say, if you ever hear a woman talk about Ben Zugi, that is her partner. <laughs> She's not oh, called her husband her man. She... Yeah. <laughs> Hello there. Yeah. Okay. So here are words that are used in the story. Malach. Is an angel. Hayakar. Yakar is is a uh, precious deer. Uh, Chayal is a soldier. Patsua, wounded. The Chayalim. Chayalim is a modern word for soldier. This is all modern Hebrew. Tipat, dam. Dam, Sephardea, right? Dam is blood. Tipat is a drop, a drop of blood. Lahavi, mm -hmm. to bring. Hey, V, the past he brought. Amru, they said, you know that Vayomer is all over in the Torah. And he said, Vayomer Adonai El Moshe, Vayomer Moshe El, El Adonai. God said to Moses, Moses said to God. They're talking to each other a lot. Uh, Nishama is another word for nefesh, soul. And in and in Yiddish, your Nishama, a get Nishama is a good hearted person in Yiddish, a good soul. A gazlan, gazlan is a robber, a crook. Shena, sleep. Cheder um, shena, cheder is a room, cheder shena, a sleeping room. And that would be a bedroom. Ochel is food, cheder ochel, a dining room. Okay. Zachar. So uh, remember, they, they talk about remember the Holocaust, Zachar, and Dima is a tear. Okay, relatives on the bottom, Aim is mother, Imo, that Vav on the end is uh, possessive, his mother. Dam, blood, Damo, his blood. Nefesh, soul, Lapsha, her soul, with the hay on the, on the end. And then his son and Bina, her son. So here's the story. And I did not write out a translation because I didn't want to. So um, is there somebody who can read up to up to the number five? Up to the number five. It's the middle of the second line. You can take your time with it. Okay, you don't have to rush. Okay, Diane. Hebrew story time. Five. Oh, is that okay? I see it. Uh, let's see. Malach Echad Nishalt Mimar Mimarom Nish Nishlach. Did I say it wrong? Nishlach. Nishlach Mimarom Lechavi et Hadavar. Hayakar, Ba'olam, Yarad, Hamal, Hamal, Och, Umatzah. Good. Now, this is not matzah like matzah that we yeah. use. <laughs> this is a verb. <laughs> so, Malach, what is a Malach? Angel. angel. How many angels? Malach, Echad. One. One, One angel. Nishlach, if you look at the bottom, it tells you. Sent. Was sent. Was sent. An angel was sent. 
Mi marom. Marom means heaven. From heaven, from mm -hmm. above or heaven. Shamayim marom, mi marom, from, from up there. Lahavi. Mm -hmm. Look in the vocabulary. Bring. To bring. Et is used before direct object. It's not translated. To bring. Hadavar hayakar ba'olam. Davar. Word. Davar means word. It also means a thing. Okay. A davar. Hayakar. So what's the Dear. Dear. Dear in a sense precious. An angel was sent from heaven to bring um, the 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 precious thing ba'olam in the world. Yeah, world. the most precious thing in the world. Mm. Okay. A, a little bit more, Diane. Oh. oh, yeah, okay. So, Yarad, what's that? Went down? It went down. Yeah, it went down. Hamalak. The angel. The angel. Umatsa. And, and found? Yes, and found. Oh, they have used some of these. Chayal Patsua. What's a chayal? Wounded soldier. Mm -hmm. Chayal Patsua. Oh. Okay. Um, Nancy, you want to continue? Hayal Patsua Asher Ma Sar Na Show. Okay, so if you, this is a wounded soldier, Asher, who, Masar, who was missing, who lost his nephesh, he died. Oh. He has oh. a way of saying you, he gave his life. Masar Nafsho, keep going. Bayad Amo. Bayad Amo. Amo. And what does it say for his people? people. Oh. Okay, so it was a soldier dying in battle for the people. Oh, the Ad Adso. And for what does Eretz mean? Eretz is right now. Eretz. Land. Land. And for his land, for his country. Okay. So we have a, a, an angel here uh, was, went down to find what's the most precious thing. And he came upon this uh, soldier who died for his country. Okay. Who wants to continue? I can read again. Okay. I love that. She said, I can read it. Go ahead. Hey, V. Did you want me to read it again? No, continue with Hey, V. Hey, V. Hamalach et teapot. Oh, no, meat pot. No, teapot. Teapot. I was right. I that. That's a text. <laughs> Beautiful. Domo hoa harona. Okay, so he brought, the angel brought the a drop of his blood, uh, his last, the last drop of his blood. He was bleeding out, I guess, okay? Acharon, all right? Amar Bamarom, they set up in heaven. Okay, wants to read a little bit more. Francine, you want to read a little more? So when you're going into the intermediate class, do what you're doing now, reading carefully. Watch your letters, watch the vowels, and I would give you a suggestion that if there is a letter that is plaguing you, go back to your original beginner book, find that letter, and they had those pages like, mm -hmm. like a pa, po, pu, pe, pi, you know, fa, po, pu, pe, pi, until you get that, that letter down, until you really can recognize it. And that would be with a lot of the letters you don't use as much. Final chaf, final fe, final tzadi, right? Those may give you uh, trouble. Or the ones that have a dot. The shin, the sin. Um, I used to tell my, my students, write the word shalom many times. Then you'll see where the dot is and you'll recognize the shin. The other one is the sin. <laughs> if it's not on the right, writing you know in the word shalom get a get a keyword 
And, and that's your, your word shalom. You recognize the shin from shalom. And that's how you know. And the other one has got to be s. There's a little tricks like that, that that will help you. Okay, so. Um, okay. I think Yankar Hadam Hazer. Yeah. Right. What does your car mean? Expensive. It means it means precious. Ooh, it precious. means dear. The, this blood is precious. Aval. Aval lo yakar ni kol. Okay, it's precious. Aval means but. Okay. The contrary, not lo mm -hmm. yakar. From all. From all. It's, not, it's not the most precious thing. So the angels got to find something else. Okay. About Lo Yakar Nicole. All righty. Denise, you want to try a little bit more? I'm, I just printed it out again. Now tell me what line we're on and I'll try. We're on the second paragraph. Yarad. The first line? Yes. Okay. Okay. Yarad. There you are. I'm sorry. That's right. That's right. Yarag, Ham Hamalach, Hamalach, Hamalach. There's my there. Um, Na Nafayam, Nafam. No, where are you? Yarag Hamalach Shinit. No, you have to finish that line. You went down to the next. You went down to the next line by the 10. Oh, okay. I'm way below you. Okay. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> Haya Hamalach shen, uh, Shenot. They need. They need. Yarad Hamalach Shenit. Keep going. The. 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 They have yeah, they have the A V. Um Ne Shama Nishama. Mm -hmm. Uh Shell Aim Shamam Shamam Shamamra. Shamasra. Shamasra. Mm -hmm. Shamasra. Yeah. Uh oh. Uh Nef Nefesh. Nefesha. Not shall you got the right. Yarad went down, Hamalach the angel, Shanit. Second. Time. The Hevi. They had that word in the vocabulary. And brought. Brought. Mishama, the soul, soul. of Aim. Mother. Mother. Shamasra, mm -hmm. who lost. Uh, Napsha. Her gave up her life. Yeah, right. Albina for her son. Gave up her life for her son. Okay. Amru Bamarom. In heaven, they said, Yikara Hanishama Hazot. It's precious. Precious. The soul, this. This soul is precious. Aval. What does aval mean? But. But. Low, not Amiko, not, not the, the most point. precious. Okay, Diane, uh, Stacey, you want to read in the third paragraph? Yarad Hamalach, Yarad Hamalach, Bapa Am, Hash Li Sheet, Vera Gazlan. Shabbat. Okay. Went down, the angel went down, Bapa Am Hashish for the third time, right? Shalosh. Vera and saw Gazlan, a robber, Sheba, who came, Le Bait Shel Ish Ashir, who came to the house of a, a rich man. Okay. Anybody want to continue by the 12? Nancy. Hagaz Lach Gazlan Gazlan Rats 
Sa Leharog et Ha uh, Ashir He Ashir He Ashir Below Ka Below Ka Kula La Kaha Hatat Kula Hat Kashpu Kashpo Kashpo Okay Kashpo Okay, so the robber Ratsa wanted the Harog to steal, uh, to kill, to kill um, the man. Take his money. Yep, the, the rich man, Ha'ashir Velakachat, and take his money. Okay, keep going a little more, Nancy. Vehine. Vehine Ra'ah. Um. Bah Bahadar. It's read really there. Yeah. Bahadar. Ah, me. Et. Hine, and here, behold, he saw Bacheder Hashini in the bedroom, Etaisha, the woman, and she was praying in with her son, Hakatan, with her little son. So the robber this is looking in the bedroom and this woman praying. She doesn't want to be killed. Okay. Um, she was praying to Filat Hashina. So she was praying, he was davening, he was saying the Shema, the bedtime Shema. She was praying with her with her son. Okay, he named Ra'a Bacheder Hashena et Haisha, the woman, the Himid Palelet, in Bina with her son, Hakatan, the little son, to Filat Hashena, the bedtime prayer. Okay, do we have anybody else who wants to read? All right. Okay, okay. Oh, great. I have a question. Yeah. So is this in the same house where the robber was going to kill the man? He sees the woman praying. Is it in a different room? He sees a woman praying? Yes. Yeah. He wants to kill the rich man. Okay. okay. That's okay. where I was unclear. <laughs> okay. Zahar. Okay. Diane, Stacy, take it away. Zahar. Ha. Gaz. Lan. Et. Emo ha meat pa le let ito to fee lot. Okay, so Dana. Oh. All right, well, let me try to Zachar. He remembered. Remember, we have the word yiskor. That's the root of remember. You will remember. Uh, the robber remembered his mother, Hamid Palel, who was praying with him, Ito. Tefillat Hashena. She went back. This was a Jewish robber, obviously. <laughs> he was <laughs> thinking about his childhood with his mother, his mother praying. Keep going. Okay. Nafla Dim Ah May A Nav. A tear fell from his eyes. Keep going. The ha lock mean ha by eat. And he left the house. Hey, the ha mal ah eight ha deem ah has oh, yeah, oh ha zote. Good. La Mar Rome. Okay, so brought Hevi Hamala, the angel brought Hadima, the tear, Hazod, this tear, up to heaven. And here's the ending of the story. Amru Bamarum, they said in heaven, Yekara Hadima Hazod, this tear is 
is more precious, me call, than all. Key, because in Gadol, there's nothing greater, me ba'al shuva. There is nothing greater than a person who repents. <laughs> Sounds like a Hasidic story, right? I'll bet, I'll bet it is. <laughs> I'll lay my, my fame on it, that this is, <laughs> This sounds like a, a uh, Hasidic story. So many of these great um, stories are. And it's 2.30. Oh. So I sent you all the list. Uh, Diane, I, I didn't have your address, but I figured you didn't want to, to put it down. So that's okay. We have your phone number. We have a way to contact everybody. I, I also didn't put Elizabeth because she was not able to attend the class because she got a job uh, in a hospital, a good job. And it's during this time. So I wish you all success. Hatzlacha gdola. Big success in all your future endeavors, which I know will be many. And I'm sure our paths will cross. And my my downstairs is ready for anybody who is a <laughs> wayward stranger in New York and is looking for a warm bed and a good meal. I always get that here, a good meal. I'm good for I'm good for a good meal. <laughs> and uh we'll uh I'm sure we'll correspond. We'll be uh pen pals. <laughs>